So, Gunda, our doctor doctor. So, you, you, Gunda, are tired. Taksam do you. Taksam do you. So some people say, the way to play that song, the yerba te, yerba komi trick. That means something like does not function as existing. Now, this is not gelupa, but it's some other people say to exist only imputedly you know, as only imputed by conceptuality, does not cut it. You're, you're very cold, Mitcher. Oh, Koka, Nanka, what do you say? Dumajeki Nanka, Koka, and opens up the opportunity, like for things to be moved and so far, forth. Koka Cheva. Cheba meaning open. Open. Now, uh, call me chur. Ahuna, I, you know, I, I, I don't know what chur means. But it means doesn't function as existing. Some people say that merely imputedly existing is not substantial enough to say that the thing actually exists. And you can see their point. In Geluk, however, they make Dobe Dasan do Yerba De Yerba Ko Chur. So you see, in the Sutra and Ravan, you can see the other people's point of view. This is uh, uh, some of the great Sankhya writers. This is what you were referring to at the first or second day of class. Right. I'm answering your question for you. Thank you. Uh, he attended the other seminar. <laughs> um, Sankhya and I don't know who else, but you can feel it right in the sutra itself that uh, Gunda don't have much status at all. They're just uh, existent for, you know, they're just uh, imputedly existent which means they aren't existing. Even <coughs> your Yuganda, you could say, don't exist. They're just conceptually made up, conceptual constructs. And so they won't grant the status of existence, say that there are two types of existence. You see, they won't say there are two levels, two types, there are levels of existence. Rather, there's one. So it puts great force on that Gunda are just things that conceptually are what? Either imagined rightly or wrongly. I imagine rightly means it's okay if you have to munjeki nanka, no problem. But something like sunsin zetade dutruva doesn't exist at all, right? But I mean, I don't know how they give a little edge to to leaving uncompounded space. I don't know how you've got to have a little edge of something more <laughs> more than megugunda, right? Uh, or whether. I don't know what their move is. They've got to make a move. And maybe you can find that out from uh, looking around in George's text. Okay. Now, why in Geluk, then, would Songoba and so forth stress <coughs> so much that, well, uh, to back this up, to back up the Sakya position, probably other sects too, um, the Sakya, I mean, Sakya is not that monolithic, right? No, no, none of these sects is. Uh, I don't know which is the least monolithic. Uh, Harvey Aronson, when he went to study 
Nima in India and Nepal just came back thinking there ain't no monolithic. You know, I mean, that you just can't. There are some Nyingmas who don't even know about Long Jin Rap Jung, you know? <laughs> right? And that doesn't mean street people or whatever. You know, the Nyingma uh, monks, nuns, or whatever. Um, in Gilu, you know, with certainly through this work, one can see how non-monolithic it is, and yet Tsongkhapa, everybody sort of Tsongkhapa, and somehow you have to take it, you have to take account of Tsongkhapa. Is there anybody you have to take account of in Yingma? You know, Padmasambhava. Well, you know, <coughs> hardly. You know, Long Chamber for some people became the person. Anyway, it's an interesting question. Now, one piece of evidence that they could have, that I've seen in here, is that uh, I believe it's a Sangha at some point says that, the, that a person, uh, that a substantially existent person is dire, right? Or with us on the earth. And, and he means map, you see? So with us on the yoga means, in that case, meva. And so Gilugu scholars would have to explain that away, that what he's thinking of is Tobhidasa, not Tobhidasa on the yoga. Or Trumor, Tobhidasa on the yoga. Trumor, in the face of a mistaken consciousness. True shaping more. Now, what drives uh, Tsongkhapa and his followers to claim that Dokudaksam does, Dokudaksam the Yerba does function as existing? Where might his agenda be coming from? Emptiness. Why? Well, it's emptiness is permanent in the sense it's not always But it's wrong it's saying true. Uh, what they're trying to what? In the line? Mm -hmm. Well, because Gail Thomas puts such emphasis on the equality of emptiness and dependent arising. Okay. No, that's in my German. In mind only. Uh, right? Not permanent. In the mind only system, uh, whatever is a dependent arising is necessarily impermanent, uh, is necessarily a product. Whereas in the, according to, well, I mean, we're all talking, we're talking to you about all of this. Is it just Prasangika or is it also include Swatantra? Yes, it has to include Swatantra. In the uh, Madhyamaka schools, Swatantra and Prasangika, um, Whatever, you know, both impermanent and in permanent phenomena such as uncompounded space are dependent arising. Everything is a dependent arising. Because Navarjuna said there is no I can't give it to them. There is no phenomenon, there is no church, no phenomenon, which is uh, not a dependent arising. Now Maybe somebody else could limit sure to uh, impermanent phenomena, but Nagarjuna is speaking from the uh, perspective of the Perfection of Wisdom Sutras, and in there, there are 108 phenomena, and among them, uh, 
Oh, I don't know. You can look at my meditation on emptiness. I presume uncompounded space is there. Certainly nirvana is there. So true cessation. So. so uh, yeah, I was trying to figure out what the line of thought. <laughs> but so, well, the question you asked is why, what is on is on purpose? Um, agenda. Agenda. It, in it making Dobetasan the Yerba, Yerba culture. Yerba. Um, it seems like that his agenda is that that's what is refuted in the next level up in the, in the, in the consequential school would um, would refute the, that existence. So, so. Dobetasan the Yerba? Dobetasan the Yerba. The Prasangikas refute the way that's on the earth. Um, that um, Rangit Seniki Drupa is, um, is a, um, is a Madrupa <laughs> because it's me, it's Dope Daksam Gyuba. I think you're on to it. According to Prasangika, whatever exists. Yerba Yina, Tope Daksan, the Yerba Kap. It's not that Rangitsini Kutruba is refuted because it is Tope Daksan, the Yerba, right? It's that Rangitsini Kutruba just plain doesn't exist because of various reasons. And they hold that everything is Tope Daksan, the Yerba, and that Tope Daksan, the Yerba Te, Yerba culture, that existing imputedly does function as existing, okay? Does cut it as existing. Now again, some other interpreters outside of Kelu would say, well, it doesn't really function as existing. You know, they don't give much status to it, but Songaba does, because otherwise you can't have to validly establish dependent arising and this and that and so forth. You know, he wants to give valid establishment to all phenomena. And thus, since everything is imputedly existent, you have to hold that imputed existence is existence, right? Uh, that it functions as existing. It cuts it. <laughs> if that's what it's coming from. So he, um, wants, he wants to keep continuity through the mind. Correct. What he wants to do is to show that in the mind only school, there is a level of existence where they accept a level of existence called Dovidaksan the Yerba, imputed existence. And then the, the Prasangikas are not, in one sense, not that different in extending it to all phenomena. It's not like something that the lower schools considered absolutely non existent, the Prasangikas considered to be existent. I mean, the Prasangika is extended to impermanent phenomena which is a huge jump. But he wants to indicate a development within the school. Now, this is true also in Sautrantaka, uh, not just in Chittamantra. Uh, in Vaibhashika, hey, among the this, <coughs> did you have the four schools of tennis? You must Yes. Right? Yes? No. Looks like no. We haven't done that? No, that's crucial. I haven't looked at you. This is clear. Okay. Sometimes the essential things are left behind. Check out all. This is Vaibhashik. Dodeva. Sautrantika. Samzamba. Chidamak. Uh, and you know, well, actually, since the mind only people consider themselves to be Madhyamakas, right? Every school considers itself to be 
Madhyamaka, occupying the middle. Because the, the middle is what's true. The two extremes are false, as far as view goes. As far as behavior goes, the two extremes exist. They're wrong for you. They don't help you. But the, but the middle, as far as view goes, is avoiding the two extremes that don't exist at all, right? And if you misconceive them to exist, you fall into a chasm, like, and hurt yourself. It's the image is spelled out just that way. So I have to use a name. And that would be acceptable to the Madhyamakas, how they've come to be, or the name that they've co-opted, uh, and, and would be acceptable to all the other schools too, no ni meramawa. You see, those who propound that no nature doesn't exist, like just as the perfection of sutras say, Chirtanche no ni right? All phenomena are without nature. And then the mind only people say, well, based on the sutra unraveling the thought spoken by, was taken to be Buddha himself, as just the same with the perfection of wisdom sutras, that you have to posit his thought. No ni which is ni swabhava vada, which you know, you know ni swabhava, and then vada means proponent. <clears throat> so Vaibhashika is, I do it as great exposition school. Because, um, I mean, one etymology of it is that they are following the Maha Vibhasha. Yeah. The, the term Yogacara, where does that come in? Is that equal to Chiramatra? Seems to have a different sense to it, or is it the same? Well, that's the subject of the 100 page section. In some way, that's at the end of mine only Buddhism in Tibet. Some people say that early yoga chara right. is to be is not mind only, and thus it's unwarranted to use that name, oh. Chittamatra, with respect to. Them. So, who would the early yoga chara authors be? Asanga, Pasabandha, Stiramati. Dinaro is Pasabandha stood. But the people that these scholars are talking about. The ones they are referring to are Asanga, Vasubandhu, and I think Stiramati also, but maybe not. And uh, their followers later turn this into mind only. And remember I was saying that Schmidhausen has a much more balanced view that a Sangha, in his summary of the great vehicle, I don't know what else, summary of the great vehicle clearly sets forth mind only. But in his Bodhisattva Bhumi, and the Tatwarta chapter, the Dekonaniki Leo, the chapter on reality, right? <coughs> 
It doesn't mention mind only at all. So it's late. Well, you see, some people say it's earlier, some people, oh, even really? within the histories of Bhai Pudirn and uh, Taranatha. Huh. But it's clear that Vasubandhu's, as far as I'm concerned, that Asanga's brother, Vasubandhu, is clearly minor right. for me. Right. Hmm? The early word, are you saying that they were Dodeva or that they were yoga? That they, what, what, what were the early one, earlier ones before the mind only, the Masubandhu? For somebody, oh, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if they don't exert a certain absence of an external world, then what are they? Now, this brings up the question, what are these schools? Did they call themselves Shidamatran or Yogacharan? It appears not. Baba Viveka, the founder of Dodhijarva Umarangyuba, the Sautantrika Swatantrika school, uh, says that Buddha never taught mind only. Whereas Chandrakirti says he did. It was just to people who weren't capable of taking in the highest teaching. And of course, mind only people say Buddha taught mind only. So there was no school that you could go to that said, Won't you remember more? <laughs> right? With some central hierarchy and so forth. But, and interestingly enough, within Tengyuba, um, there's only one Indian commentary on Chandrakirti. Only one. By a fellow who came to Tibet, Jayanand. And then there are so many commentaries on Tibet. So, let's get all of this today. Very important. We should do it after. It's crucial to being able to talk about them. So Moni Merama is divided into <coughs> Rangyuba and Telgyuba. Rangyuba is, well, I mean, I guess I should put Tengyuba on the top, right, since we're doing typical, or how it's typically taken in Tibet. Uh, as the eighth Karmava Migyo Doge says, it was due to Tsongava that uh, Prasangika became so prevalent in Tibet. Interesting that Migyo Doge says that. And then he goes on to refute the hell out of Tsongava's <laughs> interpretation of Prasangika. And Tengaba is Prasangika. Now the chief, you know, the chief, if you say, who founded Moni Mervama? Lutu, Narajan. Who founded Tengyuba? Most people say um, Dawatapa, Chandrakir. One, one of my most knowledgeable teachers was Keshe Genen Lothar. And um, he didn't really have occasion to use a good deal of his knowledge when he went to Germany and learned German. And you know, he remained a monk, and he was teaching, became a professor. Um, and I went over to study with him because he was a student of Jumei Kensur Nguyen Langdon, the um, who was one of my main teachers, and he came to visit us in Wisconsin. And I noticed he was really bright. Yeah. So on my Fulbright, I got some time, three months, to spend in Germany, in Hamburg. And I used to be interested by the fact that when I would ask him questions, 
he would have to reflect slightly more than one would expect, which he was retrieving, you know, information <laughs> that, that was there, but uh, he didn't have it in his fingertips. <laughs> Yeah, as I may have mentioned, uh, 1,800 Tibetan pages, not sides. That would be 3,600 sides memorized. And when he would walk about anywhere, instead of talking with people or whatever, he would go through his what he had memorized. <laughs> okay. Dala talk about Some people say it's Buddha Palita. Or just... Just giant ship, but it's that's stretching a point, but he liked to stretch. Rangubun, the founder, is Lake Den Jet. Baba Viveka, Lake Den. Lake Den, which means one who possesses the six goodnesses. The six goodnesses. Lake Patrukdan Demba. Now, how they get Lake Den Jay out of Baba Viveka, I don't know. There are many ways of treating his name. Bhava Viveka, uh, Bhavya, uh, I don't know what else, Meditation on the Infinite's list and something. J should mean, comes from the Viveka, just, well, we have Vibhashika, um, but anyway, Viveka means differentiation, and J means differentiate differentiation. So probably the, the, it can't be who differentiates well, right? You wouldn't say like then, then. So, but who knows? Like Batang, then Batang, Jeva or something like that. Who knows? I don't know. Then, Rangiba, is split. See my marvelous church <laughs> into um, I think they don't posit any um, one being higher than the other. Do they jerba umorangiba? And that was probably Veka's own view. So he's the founder of Rangiba in general, and. Uh, Dodi Jibong Rangiba in particular. And you'd have to say that Nagarjuna, from a, well, from point of view of most Tibetan systems, is the founder not only of Nonyumeva Mao, but also of Tenguba. Because that was his view. That's the claim. His, his view was, his own view was not Swatantra. Even though people looking at his text made a view called Swatantra. And then Nindra Jirba Umarangiva. And then you think. Uh, and this is Yogachara. You see Nindra Jirba? That's Yogachara. Well, I didn't write these down, did I? Sautrantaka. You see Dode Jirba? Sautrantaka. Swatantraka. Madhyamaka. Nijibum Umarangiva is Yogachara. So you see, they don't believe in any external world on the conventional level. Conventional level? I don't like to say that. Convention. Uh, con they say an ex external world does not exist, even conventional, just like mine only. But then they hold the uh, view that there is no nonyi, which then means there is no uh, ultimate existence. And the founder is. Shall we make some more crazy? Shiwatsa. 
usually spelled um, Shantaraksh, Shantha, but also Shanti. Raksh, who came to the best, right, in the 8th century. Yeah. Founding it, meaning he set forth a certain type of view. that some other people follow. What does it mean to say there's no ultimate? No ultimate existence, not no ultimate. Okay. Now, what are the divisions of Sanzamba? Um, one considered a little lower is Lungi Chetan. Uh, that means following scripture, the either, well, the proponents of mind only following scripture. Now, mind only itself is founded by a Sangha whose name is in Tibetan is Togme. And And that's founded by, um, well, it's Tignaga and Dhammakirti. I'm just wondering if somehow Dhammakirti is singled out, but I guess he isn't. So long. So that's Tignaga. Oh. Tignaga. So long, um, church off. Now, Chota is Dharmakirti. Now, Asanga Tome taught Vasubandhu, just to give some lineage here, his half brother, in Tibetan, Yin Yin. Now, Tome taught. Yin Yin, Yin Yin taught Tignaga, okay? Tignaga did not teach Dharmakirti. Um, and I just wrote it down in one of these three books recently. Uh, it might have been that Dharmakirti studied with a student of uh, Tignaga. Ishvara Sena. Ishvara Sena, thank you. Which should be on two day. But anyway, that's there's, there's a line there going all the way. I have a question, and you may be able to help with this since you're working on George's book. Um, do Dignaga or Dharmakirti ever cite Asanga or even Vasubandhu? Now, you would think that Dignaga, being Vasubandhu's student, might cite him, but it also may be that he considered his, you know, just like Tsongkhapa, considered his own views to be distinct enough so that he really doesn't cite his, Tsongkhapa doesn't cite his teachers, except indirectly, uh, using material from them, but refuting them a great deal. Thank you like read the Sakya scholar Rendawa's commentary on the, uh, what I call supplement to the middle, not the ministry, it's the middle, Umunachupa. Okay, so it's clear? Oh, you got to learn all this, really. And this is just crucial for understanding what's going on. And of course, within the context that these are rough groupings and made to facilitate entry and understanding of these persons' positions, but then once those groupings are made, then there are difficulties in keeping people in those uh, in those positions, right? You know, in, in the breadth of the school <coughs> conditions. Did you tell us, and I just missed it, who the founder of the Lumki Chetan was? 
Who we take on the Sumzumba is a Sangha. Now, why is Lumi Tehang the Simsumba considered by Gilukwa scholars to be uh, slightly worse than, uh, I mean, not, not quite as good as Rigveda Tehang the Simsumba? Why? Anybody? Anybody know? They don't rely on reasons. Hmm? They, don't, they don't rely on reasons. Not so. It's because. Lumi Tedangi, Sanzamba, posits um, five lineages, Rikna, which means that there's Rik Cheva, and it means Tatu Riksum also. Mm -hmm. Even if you're going to get out of cyclic existence, there are some who achieve Buddhahood, there are some who, two other types who, what? Nyetu, not Rangyanyi, Tatungi, Kopang Zam, Tokere. They, they merely attain the state of the level state of a photostructure. Okay? Whereas some others go on to Buddhahood, and then there are some others who are uh, burdened forever of not being able to get out of it. Now you can imagine that some other interpreters wouldn't take it this way, you know, and say that it was temporary. Yes. So as long as the authority then, one of the authorities with regard to what's definitive and interpretable, and yet he founds a school that's got a wrong view. Or, um, oh yeah, I mean his view of mine only is wrong, according to the song. And yet he's, he's the authority on definitive and interpretable. One of the authorities with regard to Yeah. So that's kind of funny. So how, yeah, well, Buddha prophesied in both. <laughs> right. So then how do you know which to choose? And since Buddha spoke of two different people as doing this, and it's really at the beginning the tradition tells you whether it's right or wrong. And then eventually you can confirm that with reason. And so it's clean. Now, Dolleba has the same two divisions. So the Rigvedjadanki Todeva has the same founders, Dignaga and Dharmakir. Isn't that odd? Because in Todeva, an external world is. What do you say? In Simsamba, the most important tenet, I guess, is that there's no external world. Whereas in Doteva, it may not be the most important tenet, but there is an external world. So how could these people be the source of two such markedly different uh, schools, so to speak, schools of thought? And it, it's said that in Dharmakirti's Pramana Vartika, his, so to speak, commentary on Dignaga's compilation of valid cognition is a compilation of teachings on valid cognition. And uh, Dharmakirti framed this great text as a commentary on that. It's more like an, an independent text. Uh, but he framed it humbly that way. Um, I'm adding that, that he framed it humbly. <clears throat> that in Dharmakirti's text, he presents three different systems. One is mind only, one is external world, having an external world, and a third is come other tenets that are common to both of these schools that don't deal with whether there's an external world or not. So it is a, it's said to be a, uh, Dharmakirti's text is said to be shung gyaden. Shung means text, kao sha shakyu shung a shung, gya is a hundred, possessing a hundred texts, meaning you could give it a hundred, hundreds of interpretations. And, uh, 
it's can be highly amusing to read and perhaps also very frustrating. What's the third system you mentioned in the problem? No, no external world, external world, and then other tenets that are common to Simzimba and Dodeva. So you can see why people like Alex Wayman, whose views I sometimes find not, not so appealing, but why he would try to construct a single view in a single text. And he puts it on the side of external world. Songbo doesn't make a single view. You know, it's like, well, Songbo didn't write a commentary, but his two main students wrote commentaries. Gelsat's commentary is as frustrating to me as not as Gummer uh, Whereas Kedukje's commentary is, uh, yeah, you can read it. <laughs> and know what's going on. Have some idea. So we got Lungi Jedang, Rigre Jedang Dodeva. Now Lungi Jedang Dodeva is founded by uh, Vasavandu in his earlier writings. He doesn't, no one says that it, well, no Gilupa scholar says that in the same text he sets forth mind only and non mind only. It's that as he grew up, uh, as he matured, uh, in terms of view, under his brother's guidance, he became a mind-only person and wrote other texts in mind-only or in the mind-only variety. Now, what did he write? He wrote the Abhidhamma Kosha, number two. Abhidhamma Kosha. Treasury, I call it uh, treasury of manifest knowledge. Now, when he was doing, when he did this, he was presenting the views of. Well, he was presenting views on uh, Abhidhamma. Is it Vasuma, Vas Vasumitra's views, or supposedly the condensation of the Mahavibhasha, the six commentaries, from the perspective of the. Kashmiri Sarvasti Bhattam. Well, not the root text. No. But okay, good. so that's very helpful. Um, taking a body of work on Abhidharma, manifest knowledge, you know, uh, phenomenology, something like that, and writing a root text that included opinions he didn't agree with. And well, I suppose actually you could say it's from the point of he wrote it. He wrote this text laying out the Chetama opposition, but he would put unsuitable endings at the end of uh, uh, tenets he didn't agree with, but subtly. In Tibetan, it's not so subtle, because they say, he says, Sarah Lowe. And you say a row, it should say, not ser lo. And so that's the way that it's conveyed in Tibetan. But you can say, this is what is said, you know, or this is what is said, right? It is said that. And um, the Sanskrit is, as I remember, I don't quite recall the Sanskrit for this lo. Uh, it's more subtle. You know, it's like, that's what they said. You know, it, it, you know it, it, if you didn't know how to read it, you could take it that he was just reporting. Um, so he wrote about the Cheta Mawa, but he could sort of condense down to be a, uh, and Cheta Mawa is a vast, you know, system of 18 schools and so forth that occupies so many different positions 
they can't be lumped, lumped together. But he did uh, whatever, a lumping of a certain amount of this material. And that has come, Gilpo scholars have come to accept this as Chechama. Why? Because you gotta have something, otherwise it gets so, you know, octopusal that uh, you can't handle. Uh, <clears throat> then in his commentary, he makes clear what he accepts and doesn't accept, where his positions are. And that founds the Lungi Chejangi Dodevo. Okay? So, same text with commentary. And you could actually say, since the basic text has these, in Tibetan, anyway, very unsuitable endings, and in Sanskrit, you have to understand that they're unsuitable. Uh, even the basic text, they, although they usually say it's written from the point of view of Vaibhasha. Uh, but anyway, you could say it's written from the point of view of whatever. Anyway, the commentary is clearly from the point of view of Lungi Chedangi Dodeva. And you have? And you've got to have a text for Chedama, so you say Nurbadze. Uh, okay? So, um, for next time, would you please uh, make this chart? And uh, what can we do for a light, for a sort of light reading? Because we're, mm, we're up to the section on exegesis of the Sutra Unraveling. So uh, make the chart. And let's go over the material so far, uh, up to this point in Mind Only Buddhism and Tibet and uh, discuss some issues. You know, we haven't talked in class about the three turnings of the wheel of Dharma and so forth. Okay?